LinkedIn is a virtual event where we where we have invited different speakers for different industries and uh, to have their own businesses and organizations. I'm going to uh, introduce our first speaker of the day. His name is Vernon Yancey. Vernon is the founder and CEO of Sauce, a contemporary grooming and lifestyle brand for men and the co-founder of Check In, uh, of Hashtag Check In. Uh, Vernon, uh, thank you. Welcome to this platform. Go ahead. The floor is yours. You tell the people what you got going on. Appreciate this, Darcel. Appreciate this. Um, what's good, everyone? Uh, I think this is a amazing platform to be on, especially right now and everything that's going on. And I'm gonna be honest with y'all for a second. Like, I was close to you know reaching out to Blink today to be like, you know, I just or last night really was just like, you know, I just, it's a lot going on right now. My mind is many, in many different places, and I'm not 100 percent sure if I could really get on here and articulate, you know you know, talk about, you know, my business, is it my businesses and what's going on, et cetera. But it was like something just kept pressing on me, like, no, like that's you provided this platform. We got blessed with this platform. Darcel hooked us up with this platform. It's about like, okay, how are you going to use this time, this energy in this space? So mm -hmm. I plan to pretty much today with the majority of this conversation, really want to have a, you know, completely transparent, honest conversation about really confidence and pride and confidence in being proud. And if you saw my IG post, um, a big thing that both of my businesses was founded on was being confident in yourself and proud of who you are becoming. So again, thank you Blink Social for this platform, for this opportunity. So I'll even rewind back a little bit um, just to go a little bit deeper into my businesses. So um, born and raised in Los Angeles, California, LA native. Uh, matriculated to Howard University in Washington, D.C., graduated after four years in 2016 uh, with honors in mechanical engineering. Um, after that, went into corporate America, uh, working in government technology consulting. In that place is when I got hit the hardest with the whole virtue of confidence. And I thought I knew what that was prior to getting into the space and all that, but it was really being in that environment being pushed to the limit where you, you had that time, you had the money, you had the, the energy to really sit and think about like, yo, like what am I supposed to be doing here? Who am I as a person? I should have found that out at Howard, but obviously I guess I didn't. Um, so out of that just questioning and everything, the biggest things that I realized was me and myself, I had to become more confident in who I was. And I had to be more proud of the authentic, organic individual that I was becoming out of that. First thing that birthed out of that was, you know, a stronger focus on my health and wellness. And not just for me, but actually my brother, Blake Van Putten, and my other brother, Victor Jackson, we all came together and Blake initiated. It was like, hey, we need to figure out a way to hold each other accountable to hitting these health and wellness goals. And that's what sparked uh, hashtag checking, as you can see on the shirt, on the Instagram, it's at checking.us, is we are an accountability community um, prioritizing the health and wellness um, field. So how it started organically with us was just, you know, we each shared our goals with each other. And we were like, hey, we're going to make sure that at the end of the year, we're all hitting our goals and nobody's left behind. How that started, we started keeping a track of each other on, on Instagram. That just spread because like that accountability factor is what a lot of individuals, I guess, are missing today. And I could see that because I felt it myself. It was a different energy attached to it when I knew if I didn't get to it today, I was gonna see Victor or see Blake, you know, holding me accountable. So then that's how check-in started, hashtag check-in, as you can see on the shirt. Um, and then from that, still in that same mindset, okay, I like this pushing me to be better, but I'm like not all the way, all the way there. I was at the firm, was doing the thing. I was actually pretty successful, I would like to say, at the firm. I didn't really have that many, uh, any issues. But one of the things that happened was just like, I still didn't feel like I was owning entirely who I was. So after sitting there and being like, okay, who am I? Why am I, why do I not want to, you know, own who I am? Why am I trying to fit into a mold? That's what really birthed um, So Organic, So Suave. We go by the acronym SAUCE. Um, that birthed that because I started assuming who I was uh, physically, aesthetically. I mean, I started growing the beard. I started growing the beard at the, you know, the happy hours after work. The short sleeves would start to come on. I got some body art. You know, I really just started like, you know what? This is who I am. This is, um, this is where, this is how I'm confident in, in, 
in myself. So this is what I'm going to put forward. And this is the presentation I'm going to put forward. Um, agnostic, not thinking about anybody's perspective or expectations for me. So sauce, like uh, Darcel said, that's a full modern day um, grooming and lifestyle brand for men, all men. The most, the most important thing, the platform that we stand on for that is truly helping men become confident in who they are, how they want to look, how they look, and then also be proud of the men that we are all growing to be, the men that we are becoming, and the true leaders and champions that everybody on this call and just in our community and around us are becoming. So that's how I got started. Those are my specific platforms right now. Um, I'll leave I'll, I'll leave it at that as a quick introduction. Uh, okay, yeah. cool. I I got a question, but but before I ask my question, if anybody that's, that is watching has a question, feel free to uh, type your questions in the chat below, and then we're gonna ask Vernon questions at the end about them. But a question that I personally have is, um, how'd you gain the confidence to leave your company, you know, because I'm sure you was making a pretty good check and I'm sure, I'm sure it was a comfortable lifestyle. And, you know, a lot of people um, are afraid to leave those comfortable situations. So how are you comfortable to do that? And I think it was about, you know, it's kind of, to me it's a cliche because I've heard it more over and over again. Um, but it was really about that time when you became comfortable being uncomfortable. And you just got to the point where you were just so relaxed and things were just going like too good. You were making amazing money. You were having all the fun. You were traveling. But at the end of the day, you would come back and still sit there and just be like, like, I'm still not fulfilled. Like something is missing here. Like I did. This is where I, you know, I, I mean, I'm, make, I'm, I'm making the, the, the money. I'm like, I thought this is what I was supposed to be. This was going to bring me the happiness I was looking for. I thought that this was going to, you know, bring me a good time. And it did. It did bring me a good time. I was enjoying myself with my friends and traveling the world and creating opportunities and spaces all over D.C. and the East Coast to just people to come in and have fun. Like, I enjoyed that. It was amazing. But it still felt like, yo, something is missing. Like, something is missing in what I'm doing. And it's something in... And something is like aligned with my passion. Something in my passion has not been fulfilled yet. And that's the thing that I had to address. So when it came down to making that switch to go from the comfortable state of, you know, having a firm job, et cetera, and all like that, all the, you know, benefits that that came with when it came to that decision to do, to leave that uh, cold turkey and then just dive fully into entrepreneurship, that was definitely hard. It was, an, it was a very hard, very strenuous decision, but it really came down to, a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer, a lot of prayer. And I didn't have that, if I didn't have that direction from the Lord to like, hey, I got you, it's time, don't worry about it. All your needs are taken care of, we're gonna make this happen. I wouldn't have been able to make that jump. So that's pretty much what it came to me being confident enough to make that jump. I was confident in myself. I like knew I had to look at myself in the mirror and just be real, like, come on, bro, you know you're not gonna, you're not gonna start. You're not gonna let yourself go broke. You're not gonna let yourself start start and you know the lord is not gonna let you fail because if the lord put it on your heart you know he's gonna see you through so that mindset those three things was just like okay let's go like i don't i don't need the lifestyle that i thought i needed back at the firm where i was like you know thought i was th I was, I was thriving and all that that lifestyle was like okay pick apart like what aspects of that lifestyle do i actually need to be happy to have joy to be you know content all that what aspects do i need and it was quickly like you know what i can get all that over here I'll have and I'll be able to the money's gonna come I know I'm align, align myself to my passion I know the product I have is amazing I know that the check-in platform is just doing beneficial things to the community and I know I believe I have so much confidence in myself that I know the money is not going to be an issue but it really is just channeling your source to figure out okay what do I need to be happy figuring that out and just go at it full speed cool 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 so when coming up with these companies and deciding to join Checking US and also creating Sauce, what was like the main problem that you saw that needed to be solved and why did you want to create your company and why did you want to start those things? The main problem, it's kind of going to sound like, I feel like this whole conversation is going to be based around the world, the word confidence, but the main problem to start was definitely confidence. Like 
before I came into this mindset, I didn't have I didn't have this mindset three years ago. I didn't have this mindset a year ago. Like this is like this is this is fresh because I just made this transition back to, to entrepreneurship in December of 2019. So to start was really just being confident in yourself that like, hey, I have something that can make the world a better place that can help impact positively impact somebody else's life. And I'm not gonna hold it to myself. I'm going to share it. And that's from sauce, that's from check-in. Like we could have just did check-in amongst ourselves and like a text thread. We were like, you know, I feel we feel like this is something that more people can actually, you know, take part in and actually benefit from. So let's put it up, let's put it out there for more people to enjoy. So I think that was the biggest thing in figuring out uh how to start. And from a like literal and then from a business side of things, check in, we didn't really have too much upfront cost. So that really wasn't too big of a thing. It was literally just us being willing to post ourselves dying from workouts on Instagram every day. <laughs> um that was just that. We just had to be confident in ourselves from that perspective. But sauce, if you want to go into a product focused industry and you have a product <laughs> that you want to sell, there is a, a high capital requirement depending on what type of product you want to put out so we do grooming products right now on our website sossd.co um, we have a beard facial hair moisturizer so what that does is it softens strengthens and actually shines your beard so it can stimulate your growth and actually there's some product there's some chemical not chemicals ingredients in there that also keeps it clean and keeps it full um the process of going through and researching you know different ingredients to, to, to try to put together, the process of researching containers, the try and fail on shipping your product during the summertime, the, the understanding how to work with the post office. Like there were definitely some hurdles to get over, um, but like the main hurdle was definitely confidence when it comes to the product business sauce, it was confidence and then capital it was confidence and then capital because capital like because for product you have to re-up you got to constantly like make sure you have product ready to go you have to constantly innovate your product suite so that part forces you to be creative and that's probably been one of the most fun parts of you know building sauce is the fact that what well, i used to i'm an engineer major so i really wasn't ever forced to be creative and now i'm forced to be very creative and it's fun and it's uncomfortable and i love so when when dealing with sauce and like coming up with the different ingredients and stuff like that, I'm sure there was like a lot of trial and error through all that. Um, and a lot of people would have necessarily quit, but how did you kind of like find those resources? One and two, how did you how did you like keep like keep going to I guess figure out what works and what doesn't? I think the biggest thing in not quitting is the tribe, the village you surround yourself with. Oh, if it was just me on this journey, oh, I would have been quit. I would have been dropped off the race. Um, but because, you know, you keep going, you keep pushing, you don't give up. And then you, you know, you look up and you have people that are supporting you throughout the entire journey. Like my guy, Alex Chumley, you got people supporting you hands down. Um, Heidi Bell, you got people supporting you like Kiara Moore that's just like, you see all of us, you see them thriving, and you know if you come to them with an issue or a concern, they're gonna talk you, help talk you through it and continue to press along your way. I think that's the main thing that continues to push us along the way, even when times when we're low. Um, and as of that, that happens quite a lot. Definitely get low at some points because you had this plan. Like, you know, even case in point, what's going on right now, I had a plan like I was gonna lead a firm was going to dive straight into sauce, we was going to launch, we was going to take off, it was going to be glorious, we on the cover of everything, billboards were straight. But then here comes COVID. And it's just like, oh, snap, okay. Reset, 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 pivot. So in times like that, it could have been like that, oh, it, was, it could have just been like, oh, this wasn't the right thing. Maybe I didn't hear God correctly when he was talking to me. Maybe I need to quit it and go do something else. But it was just like, you know, leaning on my village and they're, they're, they're supporting me throughout the entire thing. And then also just understanding that like failure is never a, and when you in the business space, failure is not a bad thing. Failure is feedback on what you need to, on what you can do, what you need to do to progress and do better the next time. 
I'm a very prideful person. I'm, I'm, I'm a prideful, I used to be a prideful person on the negative side of that definition of that connotation. So it was like, yo, everything I put out gotta be perfect. Like it has to be amazing. It has to be ready to um, compete at the highest level. I don't want any failure, any negative feedback. Immediately that had to change because me trying to spend all that time to get the positive feedback and to get all the uh, applause and everything, that just pushed us back further and further. So just that accepting failure, accepting trial and error, not even failure. I would just say accept being, accept trial and error as a good thing, as a positive thing. Oh, you'll, 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 you'll set yourself up better. You'll relieve a lot of stress from yourself and then you'll be able to scale faster because now you have like hardcore feedback from your customer base on what you need to do better to continue to provide the most innovative and premium experience for them. That's dope, man. That's dope. Just like really, you're really talking about a lot of things that a lot of entrepreneurs go through and a lot of people don't talk about. A lot of people talk about the highs and they talk about the success, but they don't talk about the negatives and the struggles of it. Uh, but speaking of like struggles, you mentioned COVID-19. Can you walk us through kind of how that affected you personally and affect you on the business side of things? Yes. Uh, so from a personal perspective, COVID was just like, it was just a shocker because I was one of the ones, I'm not even gonna lie. I was one of the ones when it first came out, when it first hit, I was like, that is not gonna affect me. Like, I got this. Like, I'm gonna be honest, I was like, I, I survived too much. COVID ain't gonna do anything to me. And then when the, I actually paid attention to what was going on and the impact of it, and I was just, and I started, seeing stories of people that like I actually knew that were impacted by it tragically and I was just like wow like that was kind of ignorant of me I was like wait let me see what this really is so reading into it it just really started to put things into perspective of like yo like this is a serious event within our experience within the current history that's being made um and in my mindset it was just like okay how can I make sure that our processes from conducting business do not put any of our customers in danger, do not put any of our suppliers in danger, et cetera. And how can we just make sure that we're continuing to provide the best experience for our, for our customers, not just like get you your product in a timely fashion all together in a perfect packaging, but also making sure that you understand that we're just not here to take your money, but we're actually here to continue to keep you continue to encourage you to stay confident even during this pandemic time and actually continue to still be proud in who you are and how you look and don't forget those goals that you already set. So personally, that's how it like kind of starts like really hit me from a business perspective. We had to deal with, you know, we had a whole plan to, you know, get content shoots in studios. Every studio shut down. We had a whole plan to travel to get some of this content and to have meetings with some of the design team to finish up on, you know, the website and some of our labels. Flights started canceling or flights didn't cancel. It was just highly encouraged not to fly. Mm -hmm. um, so that happened. You had um, suppliers had to cut down on their staff. So to get the ingredients and the products and the containers that we need, now the shipping times have increased. So now we had to build that into our schedule in terms of maintaining inventory. We wanted to dive into new product realms and a lot of products and really a lot of products you see around us every day, they're all imported from international countries. The borders are pretty much locked up like crazy and now every package coming in needed to have like go through extra screening. So now we had to account for, okay, some of our key people that we would go to for certain you know, equipment, now that has been delayed. So it was just like, quickly, I almost got like caught up like, oh, what do I do? But again, it was going back to that tribe, going back to, you know, God, like, is this really what you wanted me to do? Getting the support from the tribe, getting the yes from God, sitting down and be like, okay, what can I control? What can't I control? Whatever I can't control right now due to the pandemic, move that out the way. Don't spend any energy on it. Don't stress about it. I can't control that. Right now, what can I control? What can I build with? I think that's for anybody that has a business that's thinking about business or just thinking about themselves from a personal standpoint. 
if you can't control it, I wouldn't, I would highly recommend you not invest too much energy into it because you're taking away prime optimal energy and focus that you could be putting to the things that you can control. And those are the things that are ultimately going to progress you after this temporary state passes. So that's the, that's been like my impact, the impact of COVID on me and how I've been moving and we've been moving as business as from sauce and checking to progress outside of this. Man, we, we love to hear that. It's really, it's really just, like you said, controlling what you can control. And I feel like oftentimes a lot of us lose sight of that and we lose, we think we can control everything, but at the end of the day, we got to focus on what's in front of us, focus on what we can't control and just have to have to adapt, really. Um, and I feel like if you can adapt in this entrepreneur space, you would succeed. But a lot of people that don't succeed in this space, is, they don't know how to adapt or they don't know how to deal with change. And you kind of just got to have that poise amongst yourself to just say, OK, this mm -hmm. things didn't work out this way, but we're going to adapt and we're going to change this plan and we're going to make it work. So I definitely mm -hmm. commend you on that. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. We got a we got a, a question from the chat uh, from Terrell. Uh, it says, in regards to collaborating with others and building business partners, are there key particular traits or characteristics characteristics that you look for within potential collaborators? Yes, um, business partners. Pretty much anyone. The first thing I look to is, um, you know, what is your why. Like, what is your, what's your mission? What are you, what's your foundation? Like, why are you doing whatever you do? Why do you want to do? Like, what's your vision for whatever we're potentially working on? Like, I need to make sure that we're going to, our missions, our visions, not even our vision, but make sure that like our foundations are similar before we continue to start to build a house together. Um, and the standpoint of, you know, I'm about building brands. Like I see my businesses and my companies as specific brands that provide put positive impact to the community, different communities in different ways. I'm not really focused on going strictly after high profit, high profit items. Like I'm not, I'm not going to be the type that, you know, some electric scooters become the top thing. So I'm about to go, order a shipment, import a shipment of 2,000 scooters just to sell them. That has nothing to do with my brand. That's not who I am. So when I look for collaborators, I'm thinking of like, yo, who has a mission? Who has a platform that aligns to what we're doing, aligns to trying to building a brand who's increasing impact on the community through different monetary ways? That's what I want to align with. I think the num after making sure that our platforms, our foundations are the same, the number two thing is definitely like, yo, okay, who has skills that I don't have? Being able to look at myself and say, where am I weak? Who has strengths where I am weak? Let me get them on the team, let's work. Like shout out to um, my lead of marketing right now, Kai Kitchen. She has a crazy creative and marketing mind. I'm not gonna say I don't, but it's not as strong and creative as her. So it's a matter of sitting down and be like, okay, where do I lack? Where can I improve? And finding people that complement your weaknesses so together you all can formulate this strong conglomerate that continues to push forward and progress. So that's what I look for in potential collaborators. Okay, okay. We got one more question uh, in the chat from, from Alex from Chumley. You know, Chumley in the house. It was cracking, bro. My God. Um, the question is, how do you handle giving so much while being so authentic with being so authentic when people may try to tamper or destroy your brand. Ooh, Alex, you gonna make me work this morning. Uh, so that was, that's a great question, bro. Uh, I see. That's a great question. Um, honestly, bro, I think it goes back to understanding what my what my foundation is, what my mission is, and who my, where my source, where my energy, where my strength, where my focus, where my drive comes from. And it goes back to that why, like, who am I doing this for? Um, whenever you have something good, I feel like that it's going to really change the world. Like, I love the Apple, here's to the crazy ones, the people that think the crazy ones, people that are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. If you have something that changes the world, you're going you're gonna to feel um, adversity. 
you, not everybody's going to jump on board and applaud you and, and be stick out their hand, always ready to help. Like that's a given. And I think it's just a matter of staying zoned in and down and like focused in on like, okay, what's my why? Who am I doing this for? Why am I doing this? That's what continues to push me over each obstacle, over hump, over anybody bad mouthing the brand or over any, you know, error that we make on our part. Like that's a gift, like that's that's what gets me over each hump. Cause I know at the end of the day, this isn't for me. I'm not doing this just so you know, Vernon can get a cool shirt and Vernon mm -hmm. can keep this, you know, his beard right. And I could just say like, yeah, I made this much money this last quarter. Like, that's not why I'm doing this. Like, I'm doing this for a bigger why. I'm doing this to help increase the confidence in all of us. I'm doing this to continue to inspire and encourage each of us and those coming after us, and even those that are before us to, to, to keep pushing forward and to not give up and to be proud of who they are. And don't let anybody try to come into your space and dictate who you are or what your values are, how you should feel or how you should look, how you should um, present yourself. Like cut all that noise out and really just be locked in on this is me, this is who I am. I'm confident in it, I'm proud of it, I love it. And I'm about to own this to the fullest, continue to push through. So that's what keeps me positive, keeps me smiling in the midst of everything that's going on today, everything that's going on around the world right now with the injustices, with the pandemic, with the oppression, even with all of that, what keeps me still wanting to give and just give love and be and smile and, and, and continue to keep a mind and protect my peace is because I know why I'm doing this and that's for the greater good. I'm always going to fight the good fight. So. I hope that answers your question, brother. Thank you for making me go all, get all deep and all that. <laughs> my God, my God. Yeah, that was that was a great question, and really understanding and knowing your why is definitely important with, in any venture that you uh, choose to have. Um, okay, as we as we're wrapping up, we're coming up on the uh, thirty minute deadline. Is there anything that you want to tell the people? As kind of your last remarks, tell them where they can find your stuff and everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so hashtag check-in at check-in.us, the accountability community for health and wellness. If you have a health and wellness goal, um, whether that's physical health, mental health, emotional health, spiritual health, tap in with us, follow the page on Instagram at check-in.us and let us be a part of your journey to make sure we help each of us stay committed and accountable to reaching these goals we set. Don't let the pandemic stop you. Don't let quarantine stop you from hitting that goal that you set for your physical health. Like tap in with us, we, we'll, we provide workouts, we provide meal plans. Let's continue to build each other to be better. And then so again, so swell, we go by the acronym SAUCE, um, at SAUCE, S-O-S-S-D dot C-O on Instagram and the website is the same, S-O-S-S-D dot C-O. This is the home, this is like the, imagine the built up man cave, modern day man cave for grooming and lifestyle for all men. We're not prescribing a body. We're not prescribing a beard type. You don't have to have this type of beard. We're not prescribing a certain way for you to look or even a way for you to act. We just want to provide. We're providing a safe space, a comfortable space for men to come in and be confident, comfortable and confident in who they are and then continue to be proud of who they are growing to be, who we are all are growing to be as champions and as leaders. We have products out right now. However, we're going through a full did redesign we're about to launch really soon um i'll give you you to go to our website you drop your email in the box that says it we'll keep you up to date on the launch details etc but that's launching very soon expanded product suite to really make sure we're covering the entire spectrum of grooming and lifestyle for men so very excited thank you blink social for providing this space super duper appreciative of it Love what y'all are doing, Darcel, bro. Keep climbing, keep shining light on the positivity within our community. Let's continue to build each other up, especially in the times that we got going right now. Well, yeah, we appreciate you, bro. Uh, we, we're going to keep supporting each other. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for the insight. For those thank of you guys you. who are watching, uh, make sure you go follow this brother. We're going to continue to build together. So thank you, Vern. Um, all this will be available on YouTube in next week or so. Thank you for watching our Blink Social series. Please like, comment, and subscribe to our channel. Follow us on social media to join our community and stay up to date. Blink Social, 
highlighting everything behind the lens. Made you blink.